Have you ever needed your foreground green screen footage to be controlled by your background's brightness and color? Because when your foreground doesn't change like your background, it does not look good. But if you could have After Effects to make all these changes for you automatically, that would be the bomb. That's what we're doing in today's video. If you're wanting to do a green screen composite and put someone into a background with blinking lights like on the stage of a concert or into a dance club or anything that just flashes a lot, you're going to need to adjust the brightness and color of your green screen footage to match that changing background. If there are a lot of fast flashes and colored lights, then this can take a long time. But I found a way to automate it. There are a few different approaches to this, but I tried to keep it as simple as possible. And I think I have a method that's pretty easy and allows you to make adjustments to get it just right for whatever you need. From what I have found on YouTube searches and Google searches, this is the only tutorial in existence that covers this. I think that in itself is a good reason to subscribe to this channel because you may truly get unique information here. So if you wouldn't mind, please click that subscribe button below. Also, today's video is sponsored by Random Wolf Attacks Incorporated, where you can have your next gathering or corporate event attacked by wolves. Is, is this right? I, we don't have very good sponsors yet. Okay, so a couple of years ago I had a project where the clients wanted me to make a video spoof of them performing on a huge concert stage with all the concert lighting and everything. So I searched YouTube for concert stage lighting tests and found a lot of footage of concert lighting with no performers that I could use for backgrounds. I also went to some concerts and I used a GoPro to film some stage elements and then I shot a lot of audience reactions. So while the band was playing, I'm holding my GoPro pointing over my shoulder and everyone behind me just thought I was stupid, but anyway. If you'd like to see the finished version of that project, I'll put a link at the end and in the description below. But for now, let's open up After Effects and let me show you how to do this. We've made two versions of this tutorial. This video will be the fast version where we just go through the steps quickly and you can experiment with it later on your own. But on our Studio 2 Magic Extras page, we'll have a longer version that goes a lot deeper into the explanation of the steps and just more of what's going on with it. A link to that long version is here and in the description below. But for now, let's get started with the short version. First, open up your background footage and your green screen footage into a comp in After Effects. Select your background footage and pre-compose it. Then rename your background footage to background footage. Now select your green screen footage and pre-compose it. And then go into the pre-composition and go ahead and do your green screen keying with whatever keying software you like. Once you have a good key, go back to your main composition and duplicate your green screen footage. Name the bottom green screen footage to foreground footage and the top green screen footage to foreground footage original and hide that layer. We'll use it later. Now, select the foreground footage layer and make it a 3D layer and add a new light. Set the light type to ambient and the intensity to 300. Click OK and move your light layer to the top. Now, that light only affects your 3D layer. Next, select your background layer and add the effect called sample image. Choose the center point of the background layer that you want it to take a color sample from and how large of a pixel radius you want it to sample. You will see that the sampled color output now changes depending on the sampled area. Now, open up the effects dropdown under the background footage layer until you find the sampled color output. Then, open up the dropdown under your ambient light until you find the color there. Next, just pick whip the light's color to the sampled color under the background footage and then check out the results. It should already be really good and you might even just want to stop there, but we are going to continue with another part that will put an automatic exposure control. So create a new solid and move it to just above your background footage and rename it to brightness control. Now hide that layer. This layer will have the expression that's needed to do the brightness control. Next, we want to add the exposure effect from the color correction section. Under the master dropdown for that effect, alt click the stopwatch for exposure. This will open up the expression in the layer section. We put the expression that you're going to need in the description below. So copy it and then paste it over the existing expression there. 
Make sure that the words in the quotation of the source layer part, which is the first line of the expression, make sure it has the exact same name of what you called your background layer, which in our case, they're both named background footage. Just be certain that they match exactly or this won't work. Now, this exposure setting will change depending on how bright the background footage gets. Okay, now select your foreground footage and add the exposure effect to it. Open up the effects drop-down menus under it until you get to exposure and pick whip it to the brightness control layers exposure. Now, the exposure of your green screen footage will change based on your background's brightness. You can go into the expressions again and change the multiplier to affect how drastic the brightness change is, but most of the time I'm in the four to eight range. A couple of other adjustments in the expression you can play with is the sample size, which works like the radius selector we use in the sample image effect. And you can change the sample point by just adding the coordinates of the point where you want to sample from. Now, remember that layer we hit earlier called foreground footage original? If we unhide it, our unaltered foreground covers our effects, but we can use the opacity adjustment to tone down our effects and maybe keep a little of the original colors and skin tones, but you may want to leave it completely transparent. Play with it and see what you like. You might also want to take another look at your color sample effect in your background footage layer and play with those settings a little bit more. And remember, you can open up the drop down under the light and adjust the base brightness of the light. This effect should be working pretty well at this point, but I want to throw in a bonus tip for anyone wanting to use Red Giant's Super Comp, which is just an awesome compositing tool. If you want to use it with what we've done here, you need to select your background layer and duplicate it and move the duplicated layer to the bottom. Then select every other layer and pre-compose it and move attributes. Now, go into that pre-comp and hide the background footage layer. Your green screen footage will still have its color and brightness changes. Next, return to your main comp and add super comp. Put both layers in and now you can add light wrap and diffusion and just whatever cool effects you like. At this point, you can go into your pre-composed background and change the lights and the main comp will automatically update. Or you can replace or add to your green screen pre-comp and it will also be updated in the main comp. So now you can experiment with the settings and swapping out footages and really come up with some cool stuff. If you come up with something interesting or maybe even use it in a way I've never thought of, just put it in the comments below and I'll for sure check it out. So that's it for this week's video. Be sure to join us next week. We're going to talk about how to use a drone to get a giant time-lapse camera slider shot. It ought to be pretty cool. If you want to get a notification for that, click the bell icon below. Thanks. I'm gone. I'm out of here. It's over.